everyone. Uh, even with technical difficulties, welcome to another Fresh Fiction Virtual Book Club. I'm Samantha T, and today's guest is Katie Ruggle. And Katie, I have so many questions for you because I know you from your romantic suspense books, but we definitely want to talk about your new release, Fish Out of Water. So with that, let's start off with something a little bit easy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you first get started writing? Okay, sure. I um, My name is Katie Ruggle. And um, I am in Minnesota now. Um, I was in Colorado for um, about 19 years. Um, and I lived um, off grid, middle of nowhere. Um, I mean, it's, I get snowed in and um, it get to a point where I'm like, I have to talk to someone in person. Um, so I even considered um, bringing some, speaking of drinking, bringing a, a thing of whiskey that I just happened to have as a gift um, to the, the guy who plowed, because I'm like, maybe he'll talk to me then. So um, that was, that was how remote I was for a while, but um, it worked really well to um, kind of give me a setting for my books. Um, the way I got started was um, I, I was a creative writing major in college, and then I thought, oh, I should probably do something more practical. So I went and got my MBA um, and I had a lot of jobs. Um, I uh, uh, went to, um, I got my certificate in law enforcement and um, I was a, a community service officer. So we did a lot of the forensics and I'm a total forensics nerd. Um, and um, so I got a lot of the experience um, of kind of, um, how a police investigation works, that sort of thing. Um, I was also an engineer and um, so I know about nerds. Um, but uh, um, uh, but all this time I was thinking, you know, I'd really like to be an author. Like ever since I was a kid and lived at the library, basically, I wanted to be an author. And then one day it occurred to me, um, I, you know, I have to write a book in order to publish it. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, I wrote for an online only small press um, and um, my first editor, I just loved. She, I just worked so well with her. And then she left to go to New York uh, and work with a nonfiction uh, pub, um, yeah, publisher. And so I, um, uh, I eventually, um, she just emailed me out of the blue years later and said, I've been moved to the romance section. Do you want to do a series? And even before she got series out, yet I said, yes, 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 please. <laughs> and um, I still have her. She's still amazing. Um, and now I'm with Source Books. Um, I, I was really lucky with my writing career. Um, I, I, I fell into a lot of good situations. Um, and, and you had mentioned the romantic suspense. Um, I am coming back to that. So um, what happened is um, I did two of the Bounty Hunter books and then the market just fell out of mass uh, mass market books. And those are those little ones that you get at the grocery store uh, that you can fit in a pocket and um, no one was buying them. So she said, okay, we're going to switch you to trade. And I said, great. You know, that's the bigger ones you see at Target. Uh, like this one, it has um, an illustrated cover. So I said, great, you know, um, I love that. And they said, well, um, uh, write, you know, something that's a standalone to kind of be the first one that I do in this new new type. So I wrote Fish Out of Water um, and um, it took a long time. I haven't had a book out since this one came out. Uh, it was been four years. So I was very happy to get back in. And in the meantime, I did write the last three books in the Bounty Hunter series, if anyone's waiting for those. Um, but this one, um, I Fish Out of Water, I wrote when um, uh, I was having a very bad year. I think everyone was having a very bad year. It's 2022. Um, and so I wanted a book that was just like a nice book hug. Um, there's no third act breakup. Um, not to do spoilers <laughs> for those who haven't finished it or read it yet. Um, but it's just a very safe book. Um, there's, you know, that little bit of suspense. There's a bear. But um, but overall in the relationship, 
It's it's very um, it's just very safe. It's very comforting, um, and I was very comforted by writing it. So I hope when people read it, that's that's what they find as well. Well, I love that because you're right. I mean, I think so many of us did have a hard time over the last several years, and I know my reading choices changed a lot during that time. Mm-hmm. And I'm still very much immersed in the different rom-coms. That tends to be, like you said, those comforting hugs in a way. Mm-hmm. Of I want that feel-good story. And I'm, I mean, I still read all my other genres, but the rom-coms definitely seem, hey, this is that pick-me-up that I need while everything else is going crazy. Yeah. So how was that for you when you were actually doing the writing portion of it? I mean, were, were you just kind of in, in a sense in a bit of a pink cloud as you were, were where everything was feel good with it because <laughs> I mean it definitely is a shift from some of your other books <laughs> yes um well and I I did have um uh kind of instructions from my editor um that it should be um it should be standalone it should be more of a rom-com feel so I did go in I said well okay rom-com but can I make it a little murdery and um, yes, how many explosions that. can I have? And she said, you can have like two explosions. I said, okay, okay. So we had to kind of negotiate the terms. <laughs> um, but that's that's such a good good description because um, I, I read somewhere, um, someone was talking about being a little emotionally sunburned. And um, that's where I was, where I just felt a little raw. So this book, you know, sometimes writing is so hard. I feel like I'm just having to pull each word out and some days I write 300 words that's it and I delete 500 um but for this one it just flowed it just um uh Dahlia was just popped out of me um Winston you know he was fully formed um and they just made it so easy my characters made it so easy for me so even with this book did the characters come to you first or was it more of the storyline um Dahlia was kind of the first. Um, She, um, you know, the the trend of not like other girls, which is kind of going away now, thank goodness. Um, But I wanted to be kind of the opposite of that, where she likes the traditionally feminine things. Um, She's a, uh, for people who haven't read it yet, she is a um, makeup, um, I'm sorry, makeover artist uh, from LA. And she loves... Um, helping people find their, um, like being able to show who they are on the outside um, or who they want to be or, you know, and just, just letting them, um, uh, giving them the help to find how they want to look um, and how they want to present themselves to people. And so she's very proud of this. She's very confident in it. Um, There's one line where um, they were, they're out in the wilderness. There's no one else around except those two and the bears. And, um, she's about to put her makeup on because it's in the tent. Um, and she's going to do the natural look because, you know, it fits the situation. Um, and he said, why are you doing that? It's only me and I don't care. And she said, well, it's not only you, you're forgetting someone. There's also me. And so she's very, very much, she does it for herself and she helps people do it for themselves. Uh, rather than um, for someone else's approval. Um, so I kind of had her, and then I really like Grumpy Sunshine. Um, that's one of my uh, my favorite tropes is, um, you know, the, the squishy on the inside, but growly on the outside mountain man. And then um, the, um, you know, happy, outgoing um, uh, character who kind of pulls him out of his shell, kicking and screaming. <laughs> Um, and, and I also wanted that, uh, well, like the title, you know, fish out of water. I wanted that, um, where she, she's very confident in her, in her career and her home and her city, but you take her and you just put her into this completely different situation. And, um, another one of my favorite scenes, and I won't give anything away, but she, um, likes to use, or she is able to with her tools of the trade you know, in her makeup and, and um, uh, kind of <clears throat> um, cosmetic kit um, to solve other problems. So I, I was calling it MacGyvering up like a boss. Um, <laughs> and so that was really fun, fun to play off of too. And I would think that this 
character die would be fun for you also because of the fish out of water element because you are very adventurous and all the different outdoor activities i mean the scuba diving and i mean when you were alluding to some of it earlier with the different types of uh jobs that you've had but you know with the krav maga and boxing and shooting dolly is not exactly like that so i mean was that fun to kind of look at things from a different viewpoint and of course you know like you said living off grid i mean this is almost like a, a counterpoint to, to your own experiences in a way it, it is in a way um i have to admit that i have watched so many makeup tutorials and fashion tutorials, because I'm not, as you can tell, um, I, I'm just a, you know, run the brush through a couple times and I'm good to go, um, you know, wash my face. I'm, I'm out the door. Um, and so, and I also spent a ridiculous amount of time making up makeup names and, and fashion designer names. And then I have to Google and make sure I didn't just steal somebody's, <laughs> like it's stuck in the back of my mind. So um, for every every color of lipstick, I had to make up a name. And, um, and it was fun, but it also, it probably took about um, half the time of writing the book. But on the other hand, I have to admit, I, I hate camping. I hate it. <laughs> I love outdoor stuff. I love hiking. I'm so and... surprised by this. It's okay. I know. I, know. <laughs> I love horseback riding. Um, but after I get done with that activity, um, I want to go to an enclosed home space whether that's a hotel or a house or um wherever i want a shower um i want a bed with an actual mattress <laughs> so uh, cuz i don't care how many you know like air mattress you put it's still the ground is still very hard um and also i am not a fan of ticks so it's almost a phobia um so i don't want anything to be crawling on me while i'm sleeping so that is my confession. And, and those things become more and more important also as I grow older. I wasn't a fan of it when I was a kid because every family vacation, dad and mom insisted we had at least one night camping. Oh, we were I'm doing sorry. the road trip. Oh, yeah. But one night tended to cure us all and we're like, okay, that, that was enough. Pack up the tent. Where's the hotel? And <laughs> with you, don't worry. <laughs> That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough, right? I mean, no, 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 no. Um, but I do want to go back a little bit purely just from a technical curiosity element of moving from the mass market to the trade. Mm -hmm. um, why does that take so long for the transition to, to get it published? Because um, from a reader's perspective, I mean, everyone has their preferences on the type of book. I get that. But at the end of the day, the story is the story. Mm -hmm. And you've got three of them lined up. Why such a delay? On um, that? I think that was less, um, this always happens and more just this was my situation um, because we didn't intend to make the switch so quickly. Um, and, and so we did a lot of shuffling. So in the Bounty Hunter series, um, there's, there's five sisters and um, I had written um, Nora's book. And then um, my publisher came back and said, well, we really want you to go back to, for your, your de trade debut, we really want you to go back to my first series ta little town called Simpson and kind of in reintroduce those characters and kind of, uh, it's almost like a sampler plate, right? It's all the characters. So you can, you know, whichever ones you like, you can go back and read their book. Um, and so I said, okay, so I'll write Felicity's book, which is another sister. And then, um, so I, I swapped those out um, and then they said, okay, we've changed our minds. <laughs> um, uh, we want you to write a standalone, which is more of a rom-com um, to kind of ease you into the trade. And, you know, I, I cried a little because <laughs> we've been going, this was several years down the line. Um, and also, you know, that was when I was emotionally sunburned a little bit. Um, but then I said, no, you know what? Um, I will write that, but first I have to write the fifth book in the series because I have a terrible memory. 
And I'm going to forget yeah. the characters' names. I'm going to forget, um, especially going back to my first series. I had to read the whole first series again to make sure, you know, I knew uh, everybody, everyone's quirks and who they lived with. And there's tons of characters in this little town. Um, and so I, I, I'm going to write that fifth book. Then I'll go back. I'll write the rom-com. Um, and um, uh, and then we'll, we'll do it. So it was it was partially my fault. Partially we we're just doing some shuffling. Um, and, um, uh, so yeah, that's why, that's why it took four years and then everything slowed down. Um, you know, the paper shortage, um, they just didn't have people to work at the printers 2020. So, um, everything got, got pushed back. Um, I was, um, talking to Charlene Harris and she's like, oh yes, I've been pushed back three times. And I'm like, okay, if Charlene Harris is getting pushed back. I feel just fine with with doing that. Um, and she said, I'm just lucky I get a I get a, a publication date at this point. So things got a little hairy in publishing, uh, 2020, 2021, even kind of into 2020, excuse me, 2022. Because mm -hmm. we're always anxious to see when is the next book. So mm -hmm. we also as readers appreciate that additional peek behind the curtain to kind of understand some of those nuances that we don't always get to see or understand yeah. initially so it's uh relieved to know that you've got the next books already written and ready to go <laughs> yes yes so if there's a delay it's not on my end um <laughs> so they should be coming out um let's see um so felicity's book which it has my super favorite trope in it and i'm not going to say because it's a total spoiler um, but I ended up just loving it. Um, and um, her book's July 30th, 30th. And then um, the next two should be about five months after each one. Um, so they're, like I said, unless something totally unexpected happens uh, on the publishing side, um, they should be coming out pretty consistently. Um, and then I get to start my new project. And that's what I was going to ask about. What, can you give us any hints as far as the new project? Are you going to continue doing more of the murdery rom-coms or are you back to more of the romantic suspense like with the bounty hunters and the canine units, which I love the canines. We always love the dogs, right? All right, or, right. I mean, and I know there's not more in those, but you know, along those lines and like with the cowboys, which direction are you going to continue to kind of go back and forth and mix them? Well, funny you should say back and forth because um, I am going to continue more with the, less with the kind of um, uh, low suspense rom-com and more with the romantic suspense. I'm always going to have some humor in it because I think I'm funny. Um, so, <laughs> um, so at least I'll try. Um, so I will have more um we haven't decided on what series that we're going to go with next but um we we will be working on that soon but also um i'm going to be um working on a um romantic fantasy so i'm very really about that. yeah it's going to be something totally different than what i've been doing oh wow I mean, there's a lot, again, our readers read across all different types of genres, and we have a lot of people who are big fans of the uh, romantic fantasy, and so are you excited about building, is it a completely new world, mm -hmm. and, and are you putting together kind of like a, a book bible for that, and and how is that process going for you, without, again, yes. without going into too much detail and spoilers, but... <laughs> Right. No, it's, um, I'm working with my editor. And the first thing was, um, uh, my editor and agent and I just started talking and I said, well, here's kind of my ideas. And I've already filled two notebooks. I'm a, I'm a big note taker in, in person. I don't write my books that way, but, um, I do like handwriting notes and I filled two notebooks just with like world details, um, uh, from, you know, government to, um, magic to magic rules to, um, you know, what, um, how they interact with people with, you know, non-magical people. And, um, uh, so it's still, I only have about 
oh, about 12,000 words written on the first book. So it's still in its infancy. I'm sure it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, it's a little it's a little intimidating and overwhelming to have to make this world because you have to do all the rules. And um, uh, with contemporary, you know, you already have your rules. Like um, there's gravity. <laughs> there's there's, you know, no one with magic. Um, the, uh, you, you have the rules of physics um, that uh, kind of everybody knows. So, um, so I'm excited, but also, yes, very scared. Oh, wow. And, and being so much at the very beginning of this project, also, I would think, again, it's the, which are the different things that are most appealing to you? Of, is it the building of the world? Is it the creating of the story, the characters? Are you picturing it all in your mind and, and already seeing scenes play out of like, okay, I can't wait to get this on paper, but I have to wait until I need a little bit more of the world fleshed out and are things already changing a little bit from what you originally imagined? Completely. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Um, like you said, you know, I'm pretty typical. I, um, I stick pretty much fiction with romance. I want my happy ending. Um, but I go all over the spectrum in romance. So I do read fantasy, some science fiction, not my favorite. Uh, contemporary, of course, romantic suspense, of course. Um, Rom-coms, pretty much everything. So this has been kind of percolating in my head for a while, uh, but it's already changed just a ton, just through conversations. Um, uh, and, and it's kind of fun because, um, like I said, I get along really well with my editor. Um, we just mesh. And, um, so we'll have these conversations where we just are all over the place. Um, it's like we're off-roading and she'll say, well, what, what, if, what if we had this detail? And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. And you know, all I can do is make monkey noises because um, it's so exciting. And then I build on that. And then she says, well, what about this? And, um, but I've always changed a lot. So um, I submit the, my first draft. It's not really a rough draft because I've been through it a few times. But the first time my editor sees it, um, generally we change at least a third to a half of all the words. So sometimes she'll say, I just don't believe him as the bad guy. So how about we make this other person a bad guy and we make the original bad guy the hero in the next book? And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, okay. All right. We can do this. So I'm. The worst part to me is getting the initial words down. That's the hardest part when I have nothing. I'm just staring at that like computer screen and um, I'm like, oh, I have to do this. I have to create something out of nothing. But once I have it, then I'm like, yeah, let's rip this thing apart. I am perfectly happy editing. Um, not to say once in a while, you know, I'll read comments from the copy editor, from the, the content editor and be like, you know, ah, and then, you know, be all defensive. But I usually sleep on it. And by the next day, I'm like, yes, they're right again. And um, uh, and then I'll go ahead and make the changes. Um, once in a while, I'll, I'll have something. I'm like, no, I want this. I, I really want this. And um, usually they'll be like, OK, so let's change this other part to make it work. Um, so you know, we have a really good process. But to answer your original question, because I just went all the way around it, um, uh, yes, I'm expecting it to change completely. Um, and throughout the series. So, cause I think what I'll do is I'll write all three. Um, I'm sorry, all four. Uh, see, I can't even remember how many are going to be in the first series. And for the first time I get to take the same main character over four books. Oh, wow. So, okay. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that I'll really be able to explore, um, that, you know, the main characters and, and their world and their specific, you know, found family world um, instead of, you know, if not leaving it, at least going a little bit sideways. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to leave off questions on that because I don't want to risk spoilers. I don't want you to give too much away <laughs> so early in the process. Don't want to influence that. So instead, let's jump over and get in a couple of our fresh fiction fact questions. These are okay. meant to be some quick things off the top of your head. And to start off, who would you most want to be stuck in an elevator with? Oh, 
Um, I think I have to go with no one because that seems if you're stuck in the elevator, that's so awkward. So if it's someone I really look <laughs> up to, then it's like, oh, okay, I have to make conversation. I I have to not embarrass myself and tell the firemen come up through the shower, whatever, you know, however you're you're rescued in the elevator. Um and and if it's someone I don't like, then that's awful, you know, being stuck in the elevator with them. So I'm going to have to say myself. I don't think anyone has answered that way, but I can relate to this answer so much. <laughs> Both the reasons that you said, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you've been kidnapped but they return you two hours later because you will not stop talking about what? Got to go with romance books. Um, that You know, they always ask like, what what can you talk 30 minutes about? And I'm like, okay, uh, I can talk about tropes and romance, history of romance, um, you know, misogyny and romance, um, uh, the way romance is changing. And I'm so, I'm a total romance nerd. Um, Either that or forensics. I'm a big forensics nerd too. Um, my editor would have to say, okay, there's a fine line between interesting and gross. And you've crossed that line. <laughs> Dial it back. And uh, so I would say those two things. Um, I'm also a big horse nerd. Okay, there's a lot of things. <laughs> They're returning me after 45 minutes. It just kind of depends on what your mood is for which topic you pick, right? <laughs> right, right. Which I think annoys them the most. <laughs> Who would be your dream writing collaboration? Oh. Or is it even something you'd be interested in? Oh, um, this is like when someone asks you, what's your favorite book? And all the books in the world disappear from your mind. Um, there's so many. Um, ooh, um, can they be dead? Of course. Okay. We don't put one. Oh, that just made it so much harder. Um, oh. You know, it's kind of obscure, but um, uh, Ellen Emerson um, White, sorry, I had to think about her name for a second. Um, she, she wrote, I'm not even sure if she's still writing these days, uh, but she started out in YA and um, I would check out her books over and over and over when I was a, you know, I don't know, about 10 to 16. Um, and she was kind of the one, it was like, okay, um, I want to do this. I want to be an author someday. So that would be kind of the realization of a childhood dream. Oh, wow. I like that. Okay. Okay. Now, along the lines of your favorite book, then, I'm not going to ask that specific question. Thank you. <laughs> But what is your most dog-eared copy of a book? What do you go back and read over and over and over again or reference over and over again? Hmm. Um, you know, a, a lot of the rereads, um, the first ones that are popping into my mind are um, uh, Mariana Zapata. Oh. Um, uh, a lot of hers I'll reread and reread and reread. Um, uh, there's, um, let's see, um, oh, what other ones do I, um, see, and I'm not a big book keeper. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I, I get like borrow library books. I, um, uh, do, um, Kindle Unlimited um, and if I do have a book, um, if I really like it, I loan it out to my friends. Um, if it was just so-so or I didn't finish it, I donate it to the library. I'm like, someone will like it. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think what's on my bookshelf, but uh, there's not much there. Let's see. Um, oh, I'm going to, we're going to end this and I'm going to think of 50 <laughs> that I reread all the time. <laughs> Well, you did give us some with Mariana Zapatas, so. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I, I didn't leave that question unanswered. 
Yeah. And we recently had her for book club. So we are in oh, agreement. Oh. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Okay. What is your most memorable athletic feat? I have high hopes for you here, Katie. I mean, hmm. with all of your other activities, what is the most memorable? Hmm. Oh, um, I'm going to have to go with the um, cold water rescue diving training that I just completed it um, because I, you know, in the first scene in um, Hold Your Breath um, where she's in training and um, she goes in the water and she gets cold shock and she just kind of floats to the top. Um, I did that. So that was... Ooh. That was, that was me. It was, um, and they just tapped me on the head. <laughs> like you alive, you okay. And then I put my head up cause I, I was kind of disoriented. I didn't know where I was. Um, and, um, it was just so cold. Um, and there's something like I've always had the idea for that book came because one of my nightmares, um, it's kind of one of those irrational nightmares, like getting stuck in quicksand or something, but you always have um, something where you think, oh, that would be so scary, even though there's like a 0.0001% chance of that ever happening. Um, that would be so scary. Um, and that was, you get under the ice and the current takes you and you try to go up and this thick sheet of ice is on the top and you can't get out. Um, that was always kind of, one of the things I, I always thought sounded terrifying. Um, so, so yeah, that was, that was probably when I pushed myself the most, um, to do something I was very uncomfortable, uh, doing it and it ended up, you know, um, being very worthwhile. And, and, um, uh, I was on the, um, volunteer, uh, dive team for the fire, uh, fire department in the mountains at the time. And so I was very glad I did it, but man, I had to talk myself into that. Wow. Mm. Water, cold, ice, all not my thing. So, so right? kudos for that. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Um, if you knew that they were real, which would you rather see a werewolf or an alien? Hmm. What does the alien look like? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to go with more like the Roswell type. Oh, then definitely the werewolf. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Monster romance has ruined me. So um, I wouldn't be thinking like, oh, alien, what kind of technology can you teach? No, it's, well, is he hot? See, those are the ones I'm reading. So yeah, that's where it, I guess it does. I have to clarify this question better, I guess, in the future. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind finding suddenly the alien, you know, who's eight foot tall, you know, horns, <laughs> you know, odds are it's probably, yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking Roswell guys. Yeah. <laughs> who wouldn't want to, you know, the, horny aliens right oh yes yes um i i've been getting a couple of different gifts with the big blue horned ice planet barbarian things so so yeah um, obviously i read those too <laughs> oh oh and just speaking of i have to show you this because it just came in the mail today and um look how cute that is oops it's backwards is there a way to flip it no i can read it i think oh, it's you just backwards it. yes Climb How? every mountain man. I like that. <laughs> and yeah. and they, they put little uh, Swedish fish in there. I have to admit, because when I was looking at some stuff online earlier, all the little blurbs that were going with this book and one of the others of like, you know, why a mountain man? Because they're fun to climb and, you know, because they know how to pitch a tent. And I was like, oh yeah, I like these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And those, um, I, I think my editor wanted me to write this series um, because she already had the plan, the puns planned. Um, she is the pun master. So they are all thanks to her. I just, um, uh, she would just send me a whole list of like 50 of them and I'd pick my favorite. 
So, but I did, I did wow. love those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, with so much that's planned, where is the best place for our readers to keep up with you and find out the schedules of what's coming next? Um, so I am on Instagram. Um, I'm on threads and it's, uh, both places it's at Katie Rogel. So pretty easy. Um, just my name and, um, my website, um, I really only use it, um, for when I have a new book out, when I have some other really big news. Um, I, I posted, um, when there was going to be a, um, a net galley giveaway, um, and um uh, or a read now event so i'll post there and um they can also sign up for my newsletter i am a very rare newsletter writer um i think the most i've done is maybe four in a year so you will not be spammed um and um and you can always you know take off if, if you know you get sick of me but um it's it's like again it's when i have a new book out um, when, um, sometimes I'll post when I'm going to be somewhere, uh, like I'm going to be in Texas in May, May 1st, I think. Um, so I'll let people know just if they're in the area. Um, but it's, it's not an everyday, um, here's what's going on in my day-to-day -day life at all. Well, you've given us a lot to look forward to, including the latest release, The Fish Out of Water. So thank you again for joining us this evening, but please stick around for the happy hour Q&A with our other readers. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome.